Hi folks, and welcome to the Frugal Radio, where we enjoy exploring the magic and mystery of radio waves. If you're interested in software-defined radios or intercepting radio communications on a budget, you're in good company on this channel. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell if you want to be alerted to any new content that becomes available. And if you're a returning subscriber and a regular to the channel, thank you very much for your support. It's great to have you back again. The RTL SDR team just released an updated version of their L-band patch antenna, and I wanted to be the first to show you it in action. I'm going to lay my cards on the table right now. This antenna rocks and gets a big thumbs up from Frugal Radio. Mayday America, 953 as you may already know, I enjoy decoding CPDLC messages from air traffic control centres across the globe that mostly are transmitted via satellite. Up until now, I've been using the $15 SDR Kits antenna, which can be purchased from the UK. I did a review demonstrating that antenna back in 2020, which you can view by clicking here. In this video, I'll demonstrate the new RTL SDR.com L-band patch antenna and we'll compare it with the SDR kits antenna I purchased last year. But before we jump in and look at the antenna in more detail, I want to mention that the RTL SDR blog are sponsoring a giveaway of one of these antennas to one of the Frugal Radio channel subscribers. Over the next two weeks, one of my subscribers is going to receive a free $50 RTL SDR L-band patch antenna and a little extra something to go along with it. More about that later in this video. So let's look right in the box itself. Here we have what appears to be the patch, uh, part of the antenna. Take it out of the box. So it's a nice uh, large shape, much larger than the SDR kit antenna. And there's a mounting port. And of course we have our uh, antenna connector right there. We have an extension cable kit, RG174. Here we have a tripod. And lastly, we have a suction cup for mounting this thing on glass on the windows. So here you can see my basic setup in action. I've got a power cord running down to uh, provide electricity for the Dell laptop, which is about six year old. It's uh, nothing that fancy. And it's plugged into an RTL SDR.com version three dongle. The dongle then is, uh, is plugged in to the new patch antenna from RTL SDR.com. On the laptop, I switched on the BIOS T for the RTL SDR version 3 and started an older copy of SDR Sharp because it runs a little better on this older laptop. Right away, I could see lots of carriers coming from the various transponders on the Inmarsat satellite right in the middle of the aeroband, so I opened Jero and got it set up ready to do some decoding. Retuning to a PSMC channel on the 97 degree west satellite saw Jero quickly spring to life. The signal to noise ratio was excellent, higher than I had ever seen before, and the constellation display confirmed the strong signal being received. I quickly checked a 600 BPS aero channel, where Jero was able to quickly sync with the data stream, and then I verified that I could acquire a lock on a 1200 BPS signal as well. Again, the signal to noise ratio was noted as being very high. The built in LNA in this patch antenna obviously performs very well indeed. It didn't take long before Jero was receiving ACARS data from the 1200 BPS channel, which I started to view using the screens. On these Inmarsat satellites, there are usually several 10,500 BPS channels. These carry data at a higher rate and can often be quite busy. Because they are wider bandwidth channels, it's more difficult than the lower rate channels to get a signal lock and receive data. I quickly found four higher baud channels, adjusted the bandwidth in SDR Sharp and made the change in Jero. I got a signal sync very quickly, the light went green and the data started streaming in. 
The signal to noise ratio was over 16 dB and the ACARS window and plane logs started populating very quickly. In fact as I scrolled through the played log it continued populating and it was difficult for me to keep up with the number of aircraft that were being communicated with on this single transponder. The second 10,500 BPS channel was also quite active with many messages being received on it from air traffic control instructions to pre-delivery clearances being sent to aircraft on the ground. I tested reception on the two weaker channels as well and although the signal to noise ratio was around 11 or 12 dB this was still more than enough for Jero to decode a consistent stream of data. Not only was data decoded from the higher speed channels, but I was also able to receive SATCOM voice transmissions on the 8400 BPS channels as well. For when you copy my last. Hey, yes, sir. Uh, I need parted about five minutes ago. I can reach out to them if you'd like. So far, my results with the RTL SDR L band patch antenna and version 3 dongle were shaping up to be very good indeed. I know a lot of people use the Nualec software-defined radios, so I grabbed my Smart T, the model which has the Bias T permanently enabled, and connected it to the patch antenna. As anticipated, it performed flawlessly and reception was easily strong enough to maintain good decoding rates. I also tested it with my Air Spy Mini. As you can see, it provided good results in Jero with no problems decoding any of the transponders. It looks like it will play nice with any Bias T equipped SDR capable of receiving L band frequencies. The next part of my test was to directly compare reception with the $15 SDR kits antenna. I attached it to a small ground plane, mounted it to a tripod, and orientated it for the absolute maximum signal strength. I disconnected the RTLSTR.com L-band patch antenna and hooked up to the STR kits one. As you can see, there was a dramatic reduction in signal strength. The PSMC channel went from 23 dB with the RTLSTR.com antenna to around 10 dB with the STR kits one. This was just enough for Jero to be able to sync with the signal and to receive data on a 600 BPS channel but a dramatic reduction from the signal provided by the antenna being reviewed today. Reconnecting the RTL STR COM antenna brought back the much higher quality signal. I tuned to one of the 10,500 BPS transponders to try the experiment again. As you can see, the STR kits antenna was simply not able to provide enough signal to Jero on the higher bandwidth channels. It basically didn't even see them. This is one of the reasons I have been frustrated with CPDLC monitoring lately. While the SDR kits antenna worked fine for me in Europe, since returning to Canada I have not been able to decode the higher bandwidth channels. With the acquisition of the new version of the RTLSDR.com L-band patch antenna, that has changed and I am able to enjoy monitoring these channels again. As I neared the end of my testing, I decided to try and receive the Inmarsat 3 bird at 54 degrees west. Technically, I'm just within the footprint of its coverage. I found that if I got the RTLSDR.com patch antenna on the balcony, I had sufficient height to clear the trees and just about see the Atlantic satellite. From this position, I could decode the 600 BPS PSMC channel but I was really interested to see if I could receive a strong enough signal to decode data from the three 10,500 BPS transponders. After all, if I could decode the higher bandwidth channels, the 600 and 1200 BPS channels would present no problem. Surprisingly, I received three green lights from Jero, indicating a positive sync with the signal and a good decode rate. The plane log populated with data and I could see that the system was working. The updated RTLSDR.com L-band patch antenna is regularly sold at $49.95, which includes standard worldwide shipping. However, you can currently obtain it at an introductory price of $44.95 if you're quick, directly from the RTLSDR.com store. As I briefly mentioned earlier, I will be running a giveaway for one of my subscribers for one of these L-band patch antennas, 
A short video with more details is going to be released in the next few days. I recommend subscribing and enabling notifications for the Frugal Radio channel so you don't miss the giveaway when it comes out. For now, I'm going to say thank you for watching this review and for supporting the Frugal Radio channel through your subscriptions, likes, comments and donations. I'll see you in the next video where details of the giveaway will be released in full and you'll be in with the chance of winning an RTLSDR.com L-band patch antenna for yourself. Until next time, this is Frugal Radio, over and out.